It was no mean feat to navigate these dark passageways. With each branch and junction, Nate struggled to remember the route. But all his training paid off and he became more confident as he recalled the games of catch and hide and seek they had played along these passages as children. He had almost reached the turn that would take him to Warburton's surgery when he heard a sound in the corridor ahead of him. He froze. Why would anybody else be using this passageway? Few enough people even knew of its existence, the closest family and a few trusted servants. Nate blew out the candle. Perhaps somebody else was trying to get into Warburton's quarters, someone else with an interest in Marcus's corpse. He stood still, not making a sound, and waited. A few feet away, a floorboard squeaked, and then another, squeaking again as the foot was lifted carefully from it. Nate held his breath. The darkness was like a mass of black wool around him, soft and yielding, yet smothering too. He ignored what his eyes were telling him, concentrating on his other senses. There came the barely detectable sound of a tense, nervous breathing. There was a man here with him. Nathaniel could smell the faint whiff of tobacco smoke on his breath and the pomade in his hair. Fingers suddenly brushed across Nate's face, and he grabbed them, twisting the hand back to try and get an arm lock. The other man reacted quickly, reversing the move and almost succeeding in wrenching Nate's arm up behind his back. Nathaniel turned to the side, pushed down sharply with a fist, and then drove his elbow up into his opponent's chest. The air was driven out of the man's lungs. The wheezing exhalation gave him a target, and Nate, too close to use his fist, swung his other elbow into the sound, catching his assailant across the, the cheek. He slammed his shoulder into the other man's midriff, and they crashed against the wall. Nate caught a knee in the stomach and doubled over, but pulled aside before the edge of a hand could come down on the back of his neck. It hit his shoulder instead, and he replied by bringing his head up abruptly under the man's chin. There was a grunt of pain, and he drove a couple of swift jabs into the man's stomach before twisting his opponent's arm up behind his back and shoving his face against the wall. Ah! Enough for God's sake, the man shouted. Nate's grip loosened as he recognised the voice. Berto? Nate? came the incredulous reply. What did you go attacking me for? That headbutt bloody hurt. I'm going to have a bruised chin from that. And what are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing, Nate responded.